Welcome to today's live. It is Thursday, February the 16th, and I am very happy to be with you today. And that, that happens to be our topic today. I didn't plan to say that, but are you ready to be happy? I am happy. I'm happy to be here with you today. Uh, so, uh, so I'm Peggy O'Neill. I'm the founder of this group, uh, Answering the Call. And what we do here is answer first that call, that longing for there must be something more to life. I want to be happy. Um, I want to know why I'm really here, live my life authentically, freely, and know everything aligned that I'm living the life I'm meant to live. And we do, and so I said that's the first part, but it's really two parts to get to that, which is first know who we truly are, which is we're one with everything. Scientists verify this. This is not spirituality. This is reality. And then part two is then to become more sensitive to and to know and to be able to listen and know this is how I'm going to express my unique expression of this one being. So that's what we're always doing here every week as we explore and in the group explore how do we live that and, and not just explore but actually engage in the, the inquiry and um, uh, reflection and then aligning our lives with that. So it's not just a concept but we're actually living that. Today again the topic is are you ready to be happy? And this is one of the biggest questions people have. John Maxwell, you may have heard of him, is a long-standing um, coach uh, with kind of a religious uh, element to it, I believe, if I am correct about that. But, but a long-standing coach that a lot of people really appreciate his work. And I ran across a video of his the other day, and he said he's been doing this for 50 years and probably the number one question he is asked is, how do I find happiness? And what does that look like for me in my life? So 50 years of leadership coaching, that's his number one question. Because no matter what we're doing in life, we're trying to be happy. I mean, unless we're eating, well, even a lot of times eating these days, because most of us in this country are so, you know, food is easy to, to have for most of us. So even with that, we're trying to feel better in some way with what we're eating. But besides basic biological functions, everything we're doing in life is to try to be happy. Yeah, even if it's yelling at your neighbor, at some level, we think that's going to make us happy to do that, make them wrong, we feel better. Now we're not consciously thinking about that, but that's in actuality what motivates everything. And we're, we, we have a misunderstanding that happiness is going to be found in those sorts of things, in our activities, our relationships, things we buy. Um, and, and by activities, I mean the work we have, uh, reading, exercise, a glass of wine, TV, that that's what's going to make us happy. That's even how we talk. What's going to make you happy? Find a job that makes you happy, a relationship that makes you happy, so on and so forth. It's just, it's in our language. And so we get thrown into this belief and conditioning and way of living that happiness is to be found out there somewhere. And then we'll feel it. We feel it occasionally because we enjoyed a glass of wine or had a great uh, review at work today. Now we feel happy. So then we, that just gets us activated to try to repeat that happiness by doing those things again. And that's what keeps us perpetuating this belief that happiness is in all of that. And the reason we feel it is because that's who we already are. We're inherently happy. Some people don't like that word. It sounds a little superficial. I don't mean happy giddy, but that deep contentment, just all is well. That is what we're all seeking. And that's what um, I mean by happiness is that with that deep contentment. So we're going to explore that a little bit more today. If you're here in person, please say hi. I love knowing you're here and um, I'll say hi back. And if you have any questions or comments during this session, or if you're watching this on replay, please put in hashtag replay again. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and I will respond to them. So, um, 
So happiness is our natural way of being. It is. It's just we've covered it up with all kinds of beliefs and activities and conditioning. So what gets in the way of our happiness? So if you um, saw this, um, uh, if, you, if you're in the Facebook group, then you saw I had a cover picture on there and I'm gonna recreate that cover picture uh, in some form right now because I can't share a screen in Facebook Live and I just realized I'm gonna have to pull that up in a different way so hang in there with me for a minute up till the last minute I was thinking <laughs> I was, I'm so used to being on zoom that I all of a sudden it's like oh wait I'm not on zoom I can't just share this screen all right so, so, I'm, gonna, I'm recreating this. All right. So when most of us want something different in life, let's see how I'm doing with you being able to see that. Yeah. We want different results. Okay, so let's say we want to be happy. Or we want results that think, we think are going to make us happy. So that's what we're seeking, is to get there to the results. So then, what do we often do? What we often do then... Oh, and by the way, if you hadn't figured that out, the R stands for results. And so what we often do then is, the first thing we do is we try to change our actions, the A, or and or our conversations, which is really a form of action, to align with our results. Okay, I'm just going to try to behave differently. You know, I'm going to try to behave in a way that I get to have a better job so that I'm happy, that sort of thing. We, do, we try to change our behavior so that we do the thing that we think is going to make us happy or change our conversation. I'm going to get better at having conversations that I enjoy with people, that sort of thing. Nothing wrong with any of this. That's a fine approach. But we're just going to make some distinctions here about a, a, a direct path to happiness. All right, and then what we often do before that is um, we work with our thinking, uh, uh, which includes judgment and rationalization. We try to build skills. Uh, we try to learn more. Maybe we read a book. So we try to learn more. We, maybe we have some new understanding, so some concepts to help us understand um, all of it, all that's going on better. We try to see ourselves differently. So we change our self concept. Um, we work with our emotions and feelings. And we maybe work on our energy. So we exercise, have higher energy, so we feel better. And so then we could, because we realize that all of that, that I just said, all of this influences then what actions and conversations we can have, and that influences the result. So we start focusing on, well, I'm going to work on changing my thinking, changing beliefs. That's part of our thinking. Learn new skills and how to have uh, conversations or different actions and so on. I'm just repeating what I just said. So this is, I'm showing a model of how we typically create results. And that's typically for most, for the first 30 years of my coaching career, that's what I focused on, are the, this, these elements right here and these. But this was where, you know, we, we, I wanted to, we wanted to, we want to go upstream. So the, the thinking, this is upstream from taking action and having conversations. And that's upstream to have different results. So we're always going upstream, upstream, what's going to be the most effective way to move through to what we want. Okay, then, it, then when I discovered the great wisdom traditions and realized, oh, we already are happy. Okay, it's not here that happiness is. Well then, where is it? It's upstream. It comes before our thinking or any skills or actions or what we learn or our emotions or feelings. It comes before that, not after. So then what comes before? So what comes before 
is the wisdom, the happiness, peace, and fulfillment that we already are, and the infinite intelligence and wisdom that we are. So that is upstream. <laughs> this is in reverse. It's not a mirror. It's a reverse. So it's hard to, uh, anyway, you know, it's because it's reverse. All right. So uh, anyway, so wisdom and then um, our happiness, peace, and fulfillment. That's what HPF is. Are, that comes before all of this other. We're already happy, peaceful, and fulfilled. Our infinite intelligence, infinite wisdom, the W is wisdom. All of that is upstream, and this is what we're working on, working to access here. To access, to know, we don't even really have to access it, because it's who we already are. What we do is, is we open to that by, in fact, changing, sorry, not even changing, just not relaxing our focus on any thoughts, knowledge, feelings, and energy that are out of alignment with this. We just quit focusing on what's out of alignment. So we're working on what comes before. We're working to get there, to know that, to know who we truly are. The wise, infinite, intelligent being, the happy, peaceful, and fulfilled being we already are. So that's, um, uh, so, so what I, then I want to tell you about that is that, that, so something gets in our way of knowing happiness, right? Uh, by knowing, I don't mean intellectual knowing. I mean experiencing in our body the kind of knowing like I know my name. It is so live. So there's something that, that keeps us from that. So what acts as a filter to keep us from knowing all that is all of this. Our thinking filters, and, and 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 depending on how our thinking, what our thinking is mostly about, if it's a bunch of negative things that we're focused on our thinking all the time, it then this gets filtered. Our wisdom, our peace, our happiness gets filtered through all of this, and depending on how dense this is, then it's going to limit our ability to experience the happiness and the peace that we already are. Is this making sense? I hope so. So this acts as a filter as well as this acts as a filter. And so this is trying to live through us fully and freely. Who we truly are is the flow state. This flow state is not a place to get to. It's actually who we are, is being the flow. So what we do is, is we quit focusing so much on all this. It doesn't mean that we don't learn things and we don't develop skills. I'm not saying that, but we don't do it in order to support getting to happiness. We, we go the other direction. Oh, the happiness comes before. And then the happiness informs my thoughts and what skills I want and how I, and then I'm approaching skills not to get to the happiness that's already here, but now the happiness is informing how I implement the skills in my actions and conversations and in the results that, and so how I experience the world, what, how the world is for me after all of that. So I hope that makes sense. If not, put questions in the comments. So, um, so that's what gets in the way. And, uh, and then, so why, and the next thing I want to talk about is why we avoid happiness. Believe it or not, we actually do. This may be a little hard to hear, but many of us prefer the drama. We love staying in the story of what we believe about life, how life is, who we are, who other people are, how they're going to behave, how they ought to behave, all the shoulds, the shouldn'ts, the whys, the wherefores, the beliefs about ourselves, judgments about ourselves. We prefer to hang out in all of that, even though it's keeping us from being happy, but it's what we're used to. It's what we're used to. We're afraid of the unknown, what might happen if I'm really happy. And by happy, again, I mean content or fulfilled, peaceful, all of that. We're afraid of it. 
And yet that's what we're all, everything we do is to try to get there. But we're going downstream to try to get there. And what we're doing here is going upstream to know the happiness, let that inform everything. But we avoid it because it's unknown. We're afraid of it. We don't know what will happen. Um, that's basically it. And, and we just... Even though we're dissatisfied with life as it is, we're trying to get to happiness. It's the known. It's what we're comfortable with. So our thinking mind tries to keep us where we are. So we keep thinking about the stories, the excuses, the explanations, the why they did something, why I did something. Belief in a separate self. We, anyway, it's just what's going on. That's why we avoid happiness. On the other hand, why is happiness critical for success, health, and well-being? There are lots of articles about this. If you got my email this week, then if you haven't read it yet, you can go back and read it. I'm going to uh, review some of that right here because I quoted parts of articles that explain with a lot of research. I didn't do the research. <laughs> I took the articles to have the research. And the articles explain how critical happiness is to, again, what did I just say? Success, health, and well-being. So, um, so let's see, let me find this. Uh, yeah, here we go. Um, oh, that one yet. Uh, oh, well, what did I do with that? I guess I got, where did I put it? I just, Cut it out here. Well, let me pull it up again. I apologize. Somehow I got out of it. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Okay, here we go. All right. So, um, so the research associated. There's one article. Seven reasons why happiness is important and why be happy. Again, some people don't like that word. It sounds, uh, sounds superficial or something. Um, but again, happiness, you could also think of it as contentment. Um, what I was just thinking of, Harvard has a class on happiness, and it's their most filled class. I mean, I think that it's like overflow. Like, people can't get in. There are waiting lines to get in, um, I think. Uh, because, again, that's how hungry we are for this happiness. So, But why is it important to be happy? It's important because it's associated with higher income better relationships. I mean, you can just imagine if you're already happy and then you're going to a job, already happy and being in a relationship, imagine what's going to happen in your job and in your relationships. Less stress, healthier eating. You're happy, now you're not eating to feel better. I mean, you want, you're want you feeling happy, you want to stay feeling happy. So you're going to eat. Alignment, aligned with that. Um, more exercise, more more helpful. Again, when we're happy, then we're, we feel more free to want to help other people. And I don't mean help like that they can't do it, but more like selfless leadership. Selfless, you know, then we're, our ego is not so involved. We just want to reach out and support others. And more mental resilience. We're just able to think differently, be, have more clarity. So happy people are healthier and live longer and contribute more to society. How it affects our life. Protects us from strokes, heart disease, stress, insomnia, obesity, high blood pressure, pressure, laziness, and weariness. Makes us feel better, live longer, lead healthier lives. And then, uh, so, do we need to have happiness in our, well, I would say, do we need to be happy? See, that's the old context. A lot of science hasn't caught up, or people talking about these things hasn't caught up to our current understanding of reality. Yes, the wisdom traditions have been telling us this for 3,000 years. Science has been telling us this for 100 years. But most of the conventional world hasn't caught up with that understanding that we understand that we're working on here. Um, so why do we need to be happy? The short answer is uh, it's a high priority business in life. You need happiness in your life for more than just feeling good. So, oh, well, it's because of everything else I just said. Right, and then another article in the Australian Financial Review, Why Being Happy Will Make You a Better Leader, found that teams with happier leaders are more engaged, more loyal, 
more likely to solve their problems when the boss isn't around. So there's been a lot of talk about quiet quitting and of course people wanting to work more from home. But if people enjoy being around each other, being around happy leaders, happy people, then they're, they're going to work in different ways. They're going to work aligned with that happy culture, again, as this research is proving. Um, and, but you can be a miserable leader and get quite a bit done by yourself, but you're not going to be as an effective and sustainable leader who scales their team to perform if you're not happy. Because, think about it, if you're around somebody that's unhappy, then what? Well, number one, you try not to be around them, right? You want to avoid them. Or, if you're not happy, people might be afraid of you. I had, years ago, I had people afraid of me. I guess I wasn't, wasn't well, I know I wasn't very happy. And I was told that. People were afraid to be around me. Um, so, uh, so, it's, so, it's critical for workplace, the work environment, productivity, effectiveness, uh, retaining people. That's another big issue in the workplace these days, retaining people. And, and so, if, if people aren't uh, happy, uh, you're, you're, um, you know, they're not going to be staying in the workplace. Let me see if there are any questions or comments. Okay, not right now. All right, and finally, the last piece is how to be happy now, not in the future. So I showed you this model. This model. Let me make, see, make sure it's showing up. Yeah, this model. So we want to get here first not last. We're not trying to get to happiness. We're going to start at home base happiness and take off from there. So, um, so how do we be happy? It's the direct path. We actually don't have to develop. So, uh, so that's sometimes what filters us. That, that second component here what filters out the happiness is because we do think we've got to develop skills, we've got to develop capacities. I, that's what I coached for 30 years, develop skills, develop capacities, develop emotional capacity. And then if we're tired that day, all of that falls away because we're too tired to remember to implement all of that or our bodies haven't, haven't stabilized that. And so it's harder to, to maintain it. It's not as sustainable uh, and stable. So we want to take the direct path, for most of us. I mean, if we really want this, it's fine to do the developmental path. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But there's a direct path that's easier, faster, and sustainable. And that's where we turn around. Instead of developing skills um, you know, kind of away from ourselves because we're, we're saying we need to change and we've got to develop something, well, what we do is we turn around and start inquiring, not not ask why am I happy. That's psychological. That's part of the the, of the downstream approach. We again we're going upstream, so we want to look for oh well, who am I? We start we turn around and use self inquiry. The direct path. You've heard me say this often. If I asked you to stand up right now and take a step towards yourself, what would you do? There's no place to go. You're already who you are. So that's what the direct path realizes and recognizes. And that's what we work with. Oh, I already am happy. We might not feel that right now. I mean, we do at a, at a deeper level because we already are. But we turn around and we inquire. We look, oh, who am I? And there are lots of ways to lots of ways to inquire. That's one of them. Another one is to ask, what is it that's aware of what's happening? And often, especially at the beginning, if you haven't done this very much, that we can make that into a two-step process. First, to notice I'm aware of whatever it is. So right now, you're aware. I'm sure most people would say, yeah, I'm aware that I'm hearing Peggy right now, watching Peggy, um, looking on the computer, sitting in a room, I'm hungry, I'm aware of all of that. But then notice that you were, you could answer that, which means there was some awareness that you were aware. Otherwise, you couldn't have answered that. Oh, I'm aware 
that I was aware of all of that. So then you sink back, so to speak, into that awareness. And that's where you can ask, what is it that is aware of all of that? And you stay there. You really don't look for an answer. You just stay with the question. And that, by just staying in that question, you'll sink back and start experiencing that vast open space that you are. And as you stay there, you might only stay there for a few seconds at the beginning because your thoughts are going to go, this makes no difference. I don't understand this. You know, this isn't going to, I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. Don't listen to that. See, that's your thoughts. That takes you away. See, our thinking takes us away from who we are. So we don't want to listen to our thinking. We sink back. Again, by as soon as we notice we're thinking, we go, oh, what is it that's aware of those thoughts? What is it that's aware of those thoughts? You stay there for a few seconds longer this time, maybe, before your thoughts take over. You just keep coming back. And there you'll feel that deep contentment, that vast freedom and openness that we are. So that's how to be happy, is to go there right now, just like you just did, if you did what I suggested, or if you don't do it right, didn't do it right now, do it as soon as this ends. Spend a couple of minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, just keep coming back, coming back, coming back. So what we reviewed today is what gets in the way of us knowing happiness is our thinking, our feelings, trying to develop skills, capacity, you know, trying to move downstream. That takes us away in our actions and conversation. And by trying to get somewhere takes us further away. And then why we avoid happiness, really we prefer the drama. Just being honest here. We know what's going on. We love our stories. We love making people wrong, ourselves wrong. Now, if I ask you that, you say, no, I don't love that. Well, we keep doing it. So we do love it. Why do we do it? We're used to it. It's what the culture does. It's our identity. It's conversations we have. So, um, so we can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just if we want to know happiness, we want to, we want to, we want to not do that. <laughs> And then also the fear of the unknown. We fear we don't trust it. Again, most of the culture is not where we are. And so it so it's, can be challenging to, to, to be not where the culture is, so to speak. Frankly, though, the culture is. A lot of people are really opening to this. And so we're actually the leading edge of the culture. So they're more and more in this inquiry and more and more saying, I'm ready, I'm ready to know who I am and live as who I am now. And then why being happy is critical for success, health, and well-being. So it's just, it's our, it's, um, it's um, because our happiness then leads to us being happier in the workplace, happier in relationships, happier as leaders, and all of that then leads to the life that we really want. Because we want to enjoy our life and be more successful in work and more and have the relationships that we want and be healthier. All that's what happiness leads to. And then we be happy now by just sinking back, knowing that's who we are. And and then uh, and well, we can ask, "Who am I?" And you just sit with the question. It's not a mantra. You just sit with that question for long periods of time, and or you keep sinking back by saying. What is it that's aware of all of this? And you just keep coming back and coming back. All right, any questions or comments? Okay. We have a workshop on Saturday, uh, Introduction to Wisdomary Leading, which that's what I'm calling how all of this that we're doing, Wisdomary Leading, that we, that we begin leading our lives, our organizations, our families, communities with this understanding and, and it's based on the wisdom tradition, so we lead our lives with wisdom. So an introduction to this on Saturday, 11 to 12.30 Central Time, where we um, um, uncover five illusions that keep us from knowing this truth and five insights that can free us to live the way our hearts know is possible now. So it's not, it's an experiential workshop, so it's not a bunch of... Um, um, you know, I'm not just giving you things to do later. You'll actually do them while you're in the workshop. 
and, and Q and A and the workshop. So I invite you to join us. Hope you will. If you want to attend, even if you've attended before, you're welcome to attend as many times as you want. It's free. Just put uh, a workshop in the comments. I'll send you the Zoom link. It's on Zoom. Or you can email me at Peggy at peggy oneillcom or, um, or DM me. Just send me a message and I'll send you a Zoom link. And invite your friends and family if you want to. All right. Thank you for today. And I wish you much happiness as we spread the world with the happiness that we are.